So another test that you can do is going to be called diaphragmatic excursion. And for diaphragmatic excursion, I'm going to ask the patient to take a deep breath in and hold it. So go ahead and take a deep breath in. I'm going to start. So I'm going to be finding where the sounds go from resonant to more dull. And what that's going to tell me is when it's more resonant, I'm finding the lung. You can go ahead and write your breath now. So I'm going to be finding the hyper-resonant or the resonant locations here where the lung tissue is, which indicates that there's air underneath. And when I get to the bottom of the lung, I'll hear a sound change. And that sound change is going to be more of a dull sound because there's going to be no more air. Now we're going to be getting into the kidneys and the other organs. So I'm going to make note of this. And since he's wearing a shirt, I can make a little mark in his shirt. And then now, I'm going to ask the patient to breathe all the way out and hold that out for as long as you can. All right, so that's about right here. So I have my two marks. What that one does is now that he let out all of his air, his lung is going to rise in his chest because it's not expanding anymore. And again, I go from where it goes tympanic or resonant and then to where it goes dull again. So I have his expiratory and his inspiratory markings. So for diaphragmatic excursion, I'm going to take a ruler. I'm going to measure the distance between the two. And it is about four and a half. And that's healthy in a, in a normal person. Anywhere from three to five centimeters is going to be average. Uh, if you had an increased or a decreased diaphragmatic excursion, you could note pathology.